you chose this moment to spend a short amount of time giving us <laughs> um, One second, everyone. I don't get these opportunities often. And uh, I want to make sure that... Uh... Boom, all right, cool. You can't see the, the, the left corner, but that's my son, who is two years old now. And he, at his preschool, he gravitates to Duplo blocks. I feel, I feel like I'm responsible for that. Maybe. Um, first things first, I do want to thank Mark for this opportunity, this incredible opportunity. I want to thank the staff of Brickworld for putting this amazing event on year after year. The fact that this event is now 1600, close to 17. I, I mean, I should have, you know, wrote all this stuff down. But that's incredible. That's incredible. So next year we're looking at 2000, right? Okay, awesome. <laughs> but I do want to thank the staff. Thank you, Mark, once again for this opportunity. Ah, uh, before we get started, and I promise you, I will go as fast as possible so that we can get to these raffles. And I know my fellow Lego masters want to spill all the tea. Uh, well, hold on. Yeah, we can spill all the tea. Yeah, 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 we can spill all the tea. Um, today's keynote, Lego and creative teaching. They are connected more than you think. But before we move forward, I do want to take this moment and, oh, sorry, let me go back, go back. Technology. There we go. Um, Lego Master Impact. Um, for those who don't know, and for those who know, uh, we lost a great man in our Lego community, not just the Lego master community, the Lego community, and overall, our community, and that is Kerry Wu. Um, at this moment, I just wanna take 10 seconds of silence for him. Thank you all. Um, I met Kerry last year here at Brickworld, upstairs in the lobby. Me and him, we sat down and we spoke for an hour. Bear with me a sec. Um, Kerry is the example of how this Lego community should be, where we embrace each other, we uplift each other, and we joke with each other. I had the pleasure of being with him, if you look at the picture on the right side there, we were at another Lego convention and me and him were representing Lego masters at this convention. We went out to eat every time we had a chance. We sat and we talked about life. Didn't talk about Lego, talked about life. So um, the fact that he is now gone is a hole, is a void that may never be filled again. And I want to take the time to let you guys know, embrace those in this community, embrace those in your family, embrace everyone, because you don't know when they'll be around. Okay, now that all that is out the way, we can move forward. Love you, Carrie. Okay, creative teaching. Now, I have a story to tell. It's a quick story, not a long story. Third grade, a young whippersnapper by the name of Corey Samuels. I love school. I love friends, I love people, and one thing that I did not love was my teacher, unfortunately. My teacher didn't love me. She didn't take the time to know my name. 
She considered me to be a paycheck. She did not take the time at all. By the holiday break, we had a new teacher by the name of Miss Simmons. And if you see my hair, I have a shell in my hair to commemorate her. Because she gave me this shell when I was in third grade. So I always carry it with me. She told me that I could be whatever I want, however I want, within reason. <laughs> and because she took the time to listen to me, because she took the time to understand me, it gave me confidence that I didn't find in other places. So that's why I'm so passionate about teaching now, because the opportunity to shape and mold the new generation that will take over when we take our step back, we'll be on better footing than we were. That's the whole point. So tonight, I'm gonna to talk about different ways that you can use Lego in your creative teaching. Real quick, how many of you are teachers? How many of you are instructors? How many of you are parents? How many of you are siblings? How many of you are Lego builders? Awesome, that means each and every one of you are teachers. You don't need to have a degree to tell you that you're a teacher, you are a teacher. Whether you are showing a friend how to stack bricks on top of each other, or you're showing your child not to put the Lego in their mouths, you're a teacher. That's the whole thing. So, creative teaching. So, I'm gonna show you different examples, and you know, hopefully, you guys will take away something to bring back to your communities, bring back to your schools, bring back to your lugs, okay? Um, virtual group teaching. So this project right here, uh, during the pandemic, uh, obviously schools were closed, and therefore for me, a person like me who did after school programs, I was out of a job. And I decided, because of Lego Masters and everybody was home, so everybody kind of saw my face for a few episodes. Maybe I can do this teaching thing and make it work. So I decided to start virtual classes to teach kids STEM through Lego. So one of the things I wanted to do was do a project where I took four of my students and I made sure they were from different parts of the country. I did not want them in the same state nor on the same seaboard. I wanted them from different parts of the country so you can see how different their perspective is. Your perspective is not the only perspective in the world. We have different perspectives. So here you see four different perspectives of four different Lego builds. One of my students decided he loves Egypt, ancient Egypt, so he wanted to do something ancient Egypt. My other uh, student here, he loves winter. Where he's from, it's winter all the time. So he decided to do a wintry build. One of my students was from the city. He decided to do a city build. And the one on the upper right hand corner, uh, I forget what he wanted to do. Oh yeah, that's right. He wanted to be creative. <laughs> so he wanted to build something that was never designed before. And these four students built at their homes, in different places, they shipped their builds to me. We were all on Zoom, we put them all together, and they were able to showcase this at a, uh, it was a local, um, was it YMCA that we showcased this at. And basically, unfortunately, one of the students were able to be there because they live local, and the other three were able to be there virtually. So, what you see here is an idea. Even though we're, we're kind of out of that virtual state of mind nowadays, you know, obviously you can see the room, we're, we're, we're back to normal. There's still people who feel comfortable virtually learning. So don't dismiss that notion, don't dismiss that idea. And as lovers of Lego, there are ways that you can reach people virtually, social media, right? You have a lot of influencers, who love Lego, you have a lot of Lego builders who love Lego, you have a lot of Lego that love Lego, if that makes sense. Reason for that is that we live in a new world where it's not just person to person, it's actually a virtual world as well. So utilize the tools that you have. Let's move on. 
Let's move on. There we go. <laughs> okay. This is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, class that I have. This is with one of my favorite students, Matilda. Um, for those who know who Matilda is, can you say, yay! Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to play, but we'll see. Matilda is one of the most influence, influential people that I know, and she's only nine years old. I met Matilda when she was six, because she watched season one of Lego Masters, and Mark, you said something very important. You said that the Lego Masters are very approachable. We are. They reached out to me in Instagram and basically asked, hey, do you do like teaching virtually? I said, yeah, I do. At the time, I didn't. <laughs> but I said, uh, yeah, of course I do. Sure, I've been doing this for years. But that, that created a, a newfound friendship that I have found in her. And what you saw there, Matilda is a builder that does not follow color code. She loves her colors, and she likes to build colorful. So a class that I gave her was called Color Theory. Now, I went to school for uh, fine arts and stuff, so one of my favorite courses was Color Theory. It taught me how to take colors, isolate them, and to use them to bring out something that I want to convey. So I challenged her to do the same thing. Our first class, she had to use one color to build something, torture. I told her she had to build something with two colors, more torture. I said, you have to build something you can see outside of your window. Now, if you look outside, you only see a few colors if you're in certain areas. She saw only four, torture. And then I told her, you know what? For the last class, go crazy. Use all the colors you want. And then she didn't, because she really wanted to try to build something that people can identify. And it wasn't a way of teaching her not to build the way she wants to build, it was showing her a different perspective of building, okay? So as Lego builders, each and every one of you have that same skill because if you look out in that hall, you see a array of colors. But if you go to certain builds, you'll see certain colors used. You'll see certain items that are identifiable to us because of those colors. So that was something that I really enjoyed teaching Matilda. And even to this day, we still do projects. Over at my booth, I actually have a project that me and Matilda did. I asked her, what do you want to build? She said she wants to build a tree house, house. I said, a tree house house, like a tree house? No, 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 a tree house house. I said, okay. So we actually designed this build on a studio together, virtually. And she designed it, I put it together, and then I ordered parts, I sent it to her, I ordered duplicate parts. So she has a, a replica of her build, and so do I. So I will have that on display so you can actually see the creativity that this young lady has. Let's move on. Let's move on. There we go. All right. So, a little bit more virtual teaching. I'm gonna kinda of go through this a little quicker. We're going to make the X-Wing that we did in the class today. So I'm gonna to show you the pieces that I use and how I put it together. I'm gonna to definitely use this one by. So, so I'm not going, this is me, so I could cut myself off. 
Um, <laughs> but this is a class that I was doing where some of the students missed the class. So I had to learn to build and talk and look at myself in the camera doing that. It, it's very difficult to do, but you know. But the point of this is that you have certain builders that don't necessarily build in real time. They're more the ones to gather the information, think about it, and then they attack it at a later date. So this is basically what you see here. Um, uh, I just wanted to make sure that my students had the idea of what we were building in class. And clearly this is not you know, color code when it comes to, I don't want the guy that knows about Star Wars get at me because I got this. <laughs> I don't, I don't want that type of problems. Um, but that's, that's what we like to do with virtual learning. All right, let's move on. Okay, workshop teaching. So this is kind of like a workshop right here where we get to talk about ideas, share ideas with each other. Again, that's what makes us better builders, by learning from different perspectives, learning from different people. Uh, so this was a workshop that I did a couple months ago where basically families were building together. And you know, as, you know, as a kid that grew up in a big family, I was the only one who played with Lego until my brother came along. So I didn't have that luxury of really building with my parents. You know, my parents would step on my stuff and you know, you know how that story goes. But this was a way to get families together, to get them to build together. And this was a, a form of workshop. Lugs, you guys have that opportunity to do that. Within your lugs, you can always invite your families to lug meetings and so on and so forth. Uh, teachers, this is a way to get your parents for your students involved in their teaching. Instead of them dropping them off and picking them up at a certain time, maybe you have a workshop where they come in and you just build a set together, something easy. You know, get a creator set, go crazy. You know, give them a theme, give them an idea. This is one of the benefits that I really loved about Lego Masters because Lego Masters, the format of giving us an idea and having us just go in and just build whatever we wanted out of that idea, that's such a great framework for how you can teach your kids, how you can teach your students, how you can teach your uh, colleagues. This is what I was saying, Lego set teaching. So this was a great opportunity that I got at the good folks of uh, Brick Nerd. Yes, Brick Nerd. Um, they were so generous to uh, give me the opportunity to bring these sets to these kids. On the left side, it's kind of cut off. Uh, the left side was to a group of kids at my local church um, that I brought an actual, I brought the set there and we actually built it together. So it was a big community build, it was fun. And on the right, this was actually for a art studio that I rent. I, I do Lego on one side, they do art on the other side. And it was a bunch of friend sets. So I said, hey, just offer this to your students and whoever shows up, cool. It was all girls who showed up, which is fine. I love it. They had a great time. They had a blast building that. And a lot of those kids, this was the first time they ever built a Lego set. I know, right, go figure, Lego, I mean, everybody has played with Lego since they were baby. No, that's not the case, <laughs> all right? Some people had never built with Lego before. But Lego set teaching is probably one of the best ways to teach because it comes with instructions, you have the exact amount of pieces, and you have a picture of the final product on the box. That's not how I learned, though. I always looked at that final product and say, I'm gonna build something that's not this, because I'm a rebel. However, that's a, different, that's a different way of teaching when it comes to showing a, just a different perspective altogether. This is just more of the same. All right, cool. Uh, corporate teaching. How many of you work a nine to five, an eight to 10, uh, 11 to seven, a, just you work constantly? All right, awesome. Uh, so corporate teaching. Surprising enough, a lot of executives who you would never bump into or never have the guts to talk to, 
Deep down inside, they want something to do other than their work, okay? Other than coming to their office and sitting in front of a laptop or a computer nine, 10 hours a day, sometimes they wanna do something a little different. So what I've done is I've uh, you know, pitched myself to different corporations to come in and actually build Lego. So the one on the right here, this banana, and this odd looking fellow here holding it, this was for a company of, uh, it was my fitness pal. And I said, hey, what do you guys wanna build? They said, well, our mascot is a banana. I said, okay, so you wanna build like, some, no, 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 we wanna build a banana. I said, all right, don't need to get aggressive. We can, we can make that happen. <laughs> They're very serious about this banana. So I designed the banana of our, our studio and we you know we got the parts and everything like that. They had such a blast building and a lot of the people in that class never spoke to each other. Yet still they worked in the same company, but they found a new connection through this Lego banana. And because of that, you know, they were very interested in doing more projects and buying sets and introduced to Lego as a brand. See, Lego is not just a toy. It's not just something that we do as A-Folds. It's not something that we do as little kids. It's it's a tool to bridge gaps between other people, okay? That's why we lay bricks together to connect, cool? And on the other side, this was, um, let me remember, this was, this was during the pandemic, but this was basically another virtual learning experience, but it was for a corporation nonetheless. And it was weird, because we had to send everyone a creator set, and I had no idea what to teach, because and a creator said, you don't have a, a real idea. So I had to come up with something. If you were 100 years old, what would this world look like? Simple, right? It's very open-ended. You don't have to really think about what it would be because it could be whatever you want it to be. That's always something that you can use in a corporate setting. Okay, Lego Club teaching. How many of you guys have Lego clubs? Oh man, ha. yeah, we need to increase that number in this Lego convention. <laughs> so, Lego clubs. This is more geared towards the kids. Now, I'm very passionate about kids and them learning because at the end of the day, I'm not gonna be here forever, you're not gonna be here forever. Those kids that are coming up, they're going to replace. So these Lego clubs is a way for kids to engage with Lego. So one thing I love to do is Minecraft. Now, have I ever played a solid game of Minecraft? No, I only, I only got to one biome and I started to put bricks to, do you guys know what I'm talking about? No, yes, no? No? kind of? Okay, all right. <laughs> so basically, I had to learn about Minecraft so I can connect with those students. So when I came up with a club, I put on it, Minecraft Lego Building Club and the amount of kids that will school me on Minecraft stuff. Like, no, that's not supposed to go. I'm like, I get that, but this is a Lego building class, which is using Minecraft as our framework. So this was a way for me to bridge that gap, like I talked about. I'm understanding what they know, and they're understanding what I know. So, and that's how you build those connections. And you could do that through those Lego clubs. And again, when it comes to lugs, lugs, you have a great opportunity to do just that to start different Lego clubs in your community. Teachers, after school programs is the best way to do that. Now, you may not have a budget, you may not have that, but you do have people in your community that may have Lego that's just sitting at home collecting dust. Those Legos can be put to good use. So hopefully, this will give you some ideas. Connect with those students on their level. All right, school assemblies. And don't worry, we're, we're making good time, everyone. School assemblies, this is something that I'm very passionate about because this is a way to get the entire school involved in Lego. So what you see here is just me at a, a, at a, uh, at a school function and we're doing all types of cool projects. The one on the left is from an actual school where we actually built a mosaic. There are some beautiful mosaics out there on that hall. And I figured 
with the help of some real great people around me to get ideas on how I can bring that concept to schools. And what I was able to do is pretty much take their mascot, something that the kids resonate with, the kids know, and build that as a Lego mosaic and have that as an entire day where they can either reward kids for good behavior, they can either add each of the grades in so that they have a part of it. And you'll be surprised how happy those kids are. They may put one brick down and they're saying, hey mom, look, I put that one on. You know there's about a thousand of them. You know that, no, 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 that's mine. You'll be surprised how much that means to them that they will grow up in that school. They will visit 10 years from now, 20 years from now, just to take their kids to say, hey, daddy put that brick on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's the connection that you can make with those students, okay? So these are some more ideas that you can definitely bring to your schools, bring to your community centers. Here's a, a few more examples of that. Is it, is it a tedious process? Yes. Is it tiring at the end of the day? Oh yes. But when you see the look on those kids' face, when you see that you've touched them in a way that most teachers may not be able to, through their mind, creatively, that is what makes our world a better place. All right. There are companies that do different types of learning. Introduce Lego to those companies. Sometimes they, they're kind of standoffish from Lego because they just see Lego as a toy. Lego could be used as a building block, literally. So utilize those different programs, utilize those different areas where you can actually bring people into that, this fold. This room could be jam-packed even more by just telling, hey, you know, I'm really good at Lego, you know, and um, I would love to do a program for your company. I would love to do a program for your kids. I once did a program for kids in India. Never been to India before, and the time zone was just, I had to wake up 3 a.m. because they were just getting up, and they were ready for class. So that's dedication on my part, but that's also dedication that you can show to them too, because those kids got engaged, they got involved, and now who knows if they're building Lego, designing Lego, who knows? But these are things that you can definitely do. Peer-to-peer -peer teaching. <laughs> Each and every one of us are peers in this Lego community. So one of the things that I love about coming to conventions is that I learn from other people, okay? Um, my time on the show taught me a lot about myself as a Lego builder. It taught me that one, I have a lot more to learn, two, I have a lot more to learn, and three, I have a lot more to learn. But I, I enjoyed the experience because I was able to be around incredible creators, and a lot of those creators are in this audience right now. Um, I, 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 I hate to do this, but can all the Lego masters just stand up real quick, if you don't mind, to expose yourselves to everyone? You were sitting next to a Lego master the whole time. You didn't even know. Let me see, let me see. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. I, and I, I, want, I want the Lego masters to continue standing. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to have you mess up. Can you continue standing real quick? I'm, I'm already standing. Should I stand high? I, I, don't, I don't know. Should I get up? No. Um, so you see the Lego masters that are here. You see them? They're here. What I want you guys to do now is everybody stand up. This, this was a... Uh, This was posted earlier today, something that Kerry Lee said. He said that, yeah, we were on a show called Lego Masters, but 
that doesn't mean that we're the label masters. He says, everyone are label masters. Everyone. Oh my goodness. You're, you're, you're a label master too. You're right there. 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 Gotcha. So, <laughs> you may all, you may all be seated. But the point is that each and every one of us can learn from each other. Not because I was on the show, not because, you know, last year you may have won best sit show or what have you. None of that matters. So at the end of the day, we can all learn from each other. A lot of my building that I, the building that I do today is because I learned from others around me. And I was able to get better, feel like I've gotten better, because of the fact that all these awesome people are just awesome. All right? So take the time to tell your peers that they're awesome. You know, matter of fact, let's do that right now. Look at the person to the right of you or to the left of you. Tell them that they're awesome. You guys are awesome. Everyone. All of them. You guys are awesome. Awesome. <laughs> You, you are all awesome. I should have played that. I, I, hope, I hope you guys, I hope you guys heard from your peer just how awesome you are. If you haven't been told that lately, if you haven't been, you know, feeling that way, if it hasn't been expressed to you in that way, it has already. Right today, just now. It just happened. Hopefully you remembered it. Okay. Uh, celebrity teaching. <laughs> Some of you may not, may never have this opportunity uh, because this may never happen. It's, it's, you know, statistics. But celebrity teaching, especially with this guy right here, and I don't want to take time to talk about Will Arnett because yeah. <laughs> I love, Will, I love you. So, <laughs> no, but, um, one thing about Will Arnett is that he was really engaged when it comes to our, our building. Like, he literally took the time to actually understand what, what we were building. And it wasn't for the camera, it wasn't, you know, because he was obligated to. He literally came over and said, hey, you know, this looks very interesting. What, what is this? And we're like looking at the time like, dude, you know the time is running. This is not part of what we're supposed to do. But we still took that time to teach. And you know, he said, you know, this was a great experience because I took this home to my kids and I was able to build some cool stuff for my kids. I was able to identify some stuff for my kids. You'll be surprised how much parents, especially like parents, I know I'm more talking to the younger kids, um, but some parents don't know anything about Lego. But if it's something that you're able to teach these kids and they can take it home to their parents and then it creates a bigger bond, you know, where's the wrong in that? It's win-win. So I, I'm, I'm sure he learned something. I mean, those pictures make it seem like I'm teaching him something. We, we weren't talking about anything. <laughs> but it looked good. Okay. Uh, love the teaching. Um, can we be real? Can I? Can I be real? Can I? Can I? Can I be real with you? No judgment, right? Do it. Okay, great. Um, I don't like love. <laughs> that controversial statement, true. I I love love. I love love for what they do in the community. I love the fact that they bring people together. I love the fact that they cultivate such a warm environment. Sometimes, most times. But I started this kids love, and I asked Lego, "Hey Lego." I would love for this to be an official thing. They told me that they can't do that. I said, why? They said, well, love them more for the adults. I'm like, man, that's, that's a bummer. You know, and, and since then, I, I kind of had a resentment towards love. But I, I feel like I got something off my chest and I can now move forward in life. And, <laughs> and I, can, I feel like I'm lighter now. You know, I got that burden off my chest. No, nah, but to be all honest, love, you guys have a great resource. You have a great resource when it comes to getting Lego. You have a great resource when it comes to being uh, invited to different places, different things. 
invite those kids along with you. Bring those kids with you. Those kids are hungry for some sort of entertainment, but teaching as well. Doing this all is teaching anyone. You have a generation of kids that are attached to a tablet as opposed to using this. So encourage that. Encourage that building. Encourage and inspire them. Bring them to your love meeting. Show them what you guys are working on. Mom, you're going for like an hour and I don't know what you do at this meeting. Oh, come along, Junior. Let me show you what we're doing. Let me show you the guys and the girls who put this together. And maybe they can teach you some techniques. And then you can take those techniques and try them at home. Not with my level. You use your own and you'll be all right. But kids, they want that. They need that. That's something that you cannot let slip away. Because I had a dog age. And that's because I didn't have anyone to build Lego with. And then game consoles came out and I turned into a pimply fake teen and you know, it's in the rest of history. <laughs> kids, encourage them to be a part of your life. And that was it. I had a thank you um, slide, but um, yeah. I had one final message before, and um, yeah, I think I did good on time. Yeah, very much. Right? Yeah, just in time. Um, creative teaching is not taught in a book. It's not taught in a lecture hall. It's not taught by a professor. It's taught by actually doing it for yourself. I was always told that people who feel that they can't draw, they would immediately say, I can't draw, I can't even draw a stick figure. And that's art. That is art. Even if you can put two bricks together, you're a Lego artist, you're a Lego designer. There's no limitation to what you can do in this community. This is why I love Lego, because you can create masterpieces and it doesn't need to take 10,000, 20,000 bricks to do it. It could be one brick. As long as you put that one brick down, you created a masterpiece. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And if so, you can tell them that Manny said that he'll come get you. <laughs> right? All right. Cool. Uh, Brooklyn, Chicago, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you. Uh, Thank you once again for this opportunity. Thank you, bro. Thank you all. Thank you, Lego Masters, for being awesome. Thank you, Lego Designers, for inspiring us, inspiring y'all, inspiring everybody. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We love you, Clark. I'm not doing any raffles. Let's go raffles. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much.